inside City Hall. President Trump's comments yesterday on immigration, which we're not going to repeat here, have dominated the national conversation today and led to outrage far and wide. This comes at the end of a week in which there was at least a little hope of a potential deal on immigration reform, but that once again seems very much in doubt. Joining me now for reaction, as well as uh, some talk on local politics, is New York Congressman Joe Crowley. He represents parts of Queens and the Bronx, and he serves in the House Democratic leadership as chair of the Democratic Caucus. Closer to home, he serves as chair of the Queens Democratic Party. Thanks so much for being here. I My appreciate pleasure. it. Great to be with you. We got a lot to unpack. I want your uh, certainly your reaction to to what the president. Um, by many accounts said, he himself is not denying the, that particular word, which we're not going to repeat here. Beside for the point there, I want to get your reaction, but also does, we've heard him say things like this before. Does this change a, the possibility of a deal when it comes to immigration reform, which is so important to people here in the city and in your district? Well, firstly, um, just when you think you can't get any lower, uh, the president is stooped to an, an, an all-time new low level in terms of the performance of the White House. And I think it's incredibly unfortunate for young people who are aspiring, whatever your aspiration in life is, we, you know, the notion or idea that one day I could be president maybe, you know, uh, it's, it's really damaging, I think, to the, to the presidency uh, and to our country. Uh, we have young men and women who are in, uh, uh, serving in Africa, uh, trying to uh, gather information, uh, fight the war on terror, uh, and establish greater relations between those nations in the United States. And this is what comes out of the president's mouth. Uh, the impact that that has on the job that they're doing makes their lives much more difficult. And it also reduces our standing in the world. So I, I do think it has a very negative impact on the United States going forward as well. In terms of the uh, the the, the, the dream, uh, dreamers and DACA, um, you know, you never know what is coming out of the president's mouth on any given moment or day. He, he's for a clean DACA bill. Uh, he's for a clean DACA bill if you add a couple of provisions like a wall. Um, it, it's really very, I think, difficult to gauge where the president himself is at. I do believe we, we can reach a deal. Uh, for me personally, I think I'd like to see a clean DACA bill. Uh, these individuals are not a, a risk uh, to the security of the United States. Uh, linking this up to the border uh, and, and a border wall is absolutely uh, ridiculous. Um, I understand that in, in legislating we make compromise. Uh, if, there's, if there are reasonable compromises, I'll, I will know it when I see it. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, it, there's no question that we have 800,000 people whose lives are on hold right now because the president lit a fire. And now he's trying to tell the fire department how to put it out, and he hasn't a clue himself. But it doesn't seem like you're going to get a deal on DACA or on temporary protective status, those individuals mm -hmm. um, who were given status here after uh, horrible uh, situations in their countries like El Salvador and, uh, and Haiti. Um, you're not going to get that with the Democrats still in the minority, right? A no, I mean, I think the reality is they have that discretion. The president, this is solely within the discretion of the presidency and the executive, the president of the United States, to determine whether or not TPS is continued and is granted and is continued. Um, many of these were granted under the Obama administration are now being suspended by the Trump administration. Uh, what we do know, though, and we have to be grateful for small things, that it's an 18-month period by which they have to prepare to leave. And our great hope is that we'll bring balance back to Washington uh, in November of this year in taking back the House of Representatives and the Senate and bring that balance back to Washington. And maybe we'll be in a position at that point then to negotiate uh, a, a, a longer term. I think for many of these individuals here on temporary protective status, uh, they, their lives are fully ensconced here in the United States. They own businesses, they own homes, their children are American citizens. Uh, many of them have been here for almost a quarter of a century. And so it's not as easy as people think. You just uh, uh, you know, right, sign the executive order and, and they all go home. It doesn't work that way. Right. Um, you have a spending bill that's coming up that's expiring on the 19th. Mm -hmm. Would you, as a Democrat, vote for it if it is not given, if there is not given protection for these dreamers, for the DACA recipients? What I would say to that is the Republicans control every facet of government today. They control the House of Representatives, the Senate, and the President. They, they have really the bank on you guys. They have the wherewithal to pass their budgets and their their spending packages on their own. If they need Democratic votes, that, those that bill will be reflective of the values of the Democratic Party in our caucus, and that will include 
uh, DACA or the Dream uh, uh, Dreamers. It would include uh, additional resources for Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. It will include uh, fully funding of S chip. It will uh, or chip. Mm -hmm. It will include uh, pension Children's health insurance. Uh, yes, it, mm -hmm. it, it may very well include p pension protection and issues that we're working on on a national scope as it, as it pertains to hardworking middle class Americans. Let me ask you something just broadly, and then I want to shift it to local politics. Mm -hmm. There is great unity, uh, at, at least when it comes to the Democrats' opposition to President Trump. Do you feel, in a larger sense, that that's masking some real divisions within the party that you saw a little bit back in 2016 um, that might rear again, uh, you know, if in 2020? I believe that with uh, Democrats generically up 17 points in the national polling against Republicans, with the president in the high 30s, maybe uh, by election time in the low 40s, if he's lucky, but maybe still in the 30s, that we have a great opportunity for politically in terms of Democrats winning back the House of Representatives. I don't think we can do that solely by being against the president, although there's a lot there to be against. We have to be for something, and we will be for something. We are for something. We are for a better deal, better jobs, better wages at a future. And uh, it's about a Jobs for America package and really speaking to those who have felt left behind by Democrats, by Republicans, by everyone. And it's not about always having the answer, but it's about recognizing what they're going through in many respects as well and offering solutions to those problems. And Democrats will be prepared and we will be, we will, we will be united. Okay, that's shifting gears. Um, locally, how and why did you settle on Corey Johnson to be Speaker? You know, it's interesting. I, I, the consensus really building from a from a local political sense in terms of the Democratic Party. It's an overwhelmingly Democratic city. The city council is overwhelmingly Democratic. Um, this was not a decision by Joe Crowley myself. There was it was in conjunction with I think the mothers and fathers of the city of New York, including the mayor, including uh, people like Hakeem Jeffries, Nita Velasquez, uh, 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 Marcos Crespo, uh, Yvette Clark, and others. Uh, Joe Serrano. There were a lot of discussions. Well, by all accounts, so the mayor was was not in the mix nearly as much as you and, and the Bronx chair. Well, that's by accounts, but I can say to you that uh, there were many, many conversations uh, with the mayor's office, uh, and we continue to I have an increasingly better relationship with this mayor, and, and I appreciate uh, what he has accomplished for the city of New York and things that he's going to accomplish uh, in conjunction with Corey uh, Johnson as the new speaker and this new city council. What I will say is the members of the city council ultimately make that decision, and Corey Johnson ran an incredibly good campaign over two and a half years of doing that. And, and, and they're not to disparage in any way, shape or form the others. Robert Cornegay, I have incredible respect for. I think he's a wonderful uh, new leader on the, on the front here uh, citywide. I think that um, uh, Mark Levine is again an, a, an incredibly gifted legislator and a very, very smart uh, person. And uh, not that they didn't run good campaigns, but I think that Corey just hit all the bells and whistles at the right time. And again, it was about consensus building. There was an overwhelming desire by the, 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 the members themselves to get there, I think. Right. But members and, and the, the speaker himself have said that he wants to be different. He wants to be, I don't think confrontational is the right, wor right word, but, but has, has really emphasized that he wants to be seen as an equal branch of government. And that is interpreted as standing up when appropriate to to the mayor. Mm -hmm. Is that a goal of yours uh, as well? It's listen, the city council runs itself. Okay. They, they, they run themselves. Uh, what my observation would be uh, that first and foremost, we, we, we share something in common, the mayor and myself and Corey and a majority, the only majority of the city council are Democrats. Uh, we, we philosophically believe in much of the same thing, how we get there, there may be differences. Uh, do I think it's healthy that they don't always agree? Of course. Uh, why, you know, we don't, Democrats, we don't always agree. Republicans don't always agree. That's mm -hmm. okay. That discourse is fine. In fact, I think it's healthy to have an independent legislative uh, body here in the city of New York. And I think that we'll work collaboratively to, to, uh, to really, uh, uh, to, to work progressively for the citizens of this great city. Uh, and I think Corey understands that. I certainly know the mayor understands that as well. But did what happened last time with the mayor making more of a deal and getting and having more clout, frankly, to get Melissa Mark Viverito. And that was seen as blocking, essentially, the, the county chairs from Queens and the Bronx. Did that factor in your decision this time to be, to, frankly, to win, to have your candidate win? Well, that was four years ago. And uh, I think we all learned lessons from four years ago. And uh, in many respects, and I think Melissa Mark Viverito did a wonderful job as a speaker and, and in, in collaboration, again, with the mayor. Um, 
it was different this time. I think that there were different, as I said, uh, coalitions that were built, and there were also different, uh, different collaborative efforts that were made in, in, in broadening out, broadening out the, the, the influence of mothers and fathers of the Democratic Party here in the city to, to play a role in this process. Um, and so I think it actually went very, very well. And, and that includes working with the mayor, as I said before, mm -hmm. uh, and working with all of who have an interest in seeing government working properly. It sounds like your relationship with the mayor is good. It is. Is Are you satisfied with the committee assignments that were announced? From what I've gathered, I think, uh, you know, the, uh, what I can see from Queen's perspective, I think people, people feel very, very good about where they're at this year. And can you just open up the curtain just a little bit? What leverage does, does the Queen's chair have, and the Bronx chair, have over council members? It's ultimately their vote, but you, you certainly let your opinion be known. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I do think that there is a certain level of camaraderie uh, in terms of being elected officials, being uh, being uh, from the same borough. I think understanding that when you coalesce, when you come together, when you unite, uh, you have you have greater leverage uh, in terms of determining what benefits it derives for the borough, for the city. So um, whether it's uh, county chairs doing that, or it's uh, labor unions doing that, or it's other coalitions or other political parties doing that, uh, they all play a factor and a role in, in the outcome. Uh, and so uh, it's, it's hard to put a finger on and say, this is, this is how it happens, you know. But there's, 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 there's not this Tammany Hall notion of sense of reprisal, uh, or if you don't play our way, you're, 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 you're dead to me. That's not, that doesn't exist. Uh, I think if you look, certainly uh, from four years ago, many of those who weren't with us from Queens County four years ago did fairly well in terms of their committee assignments. Uh, uh, Danny Drum is now the chair of the Finance Committee. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I think that, um, you know, there's, uh, what we look for is to help benefit the boroughs overall, the outer boroughs in particular. Uh, when it comes, that's my charge, is electing Democrats from Queens County and, and doing the best I can for the borough. All right, one final question. Are you going to go to the State of the Union? Um, I will go to the State of the Union. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 I refrain from uh, meeting the president. I haven't shaken his hand. Um, you wouldn't shake his hand? I haven't yet. I haven't really. I've, I've avoided it at this point uh, because uh, I feel as though he's, he's personally attacking my constituency almost on a daily basis. Um, and it, it pains me uh, very, very much. But I believe I need to stand witness uh, to what he is doing. Uh, I, went to this, I went to a swearing in. I went to the State of the Union. Uh, or his, his first address to Congress, I will attend this year. Um, and uh, I will be respectful. Uh, I respect the office of the president, uh, even though I may not have much respect or, or any respect for this president. Wow. Okay, Congressman, thanks so much for being here. I Thank really you. appreciate it. We